Hey there folks, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the Glowforge here and see exactly what we can do here because my free trial of all this stuff is running out and anywhere you see this little icon here on the Glowforge, it's not an app, it's a website, uh, you have some concerns that need to happen because uh, it costs like $240 a year or $600 a year depending on how you choose to pay if you want to do it. Uh, and I am not going to do that. I can design everything in a different program and bring it in. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so real quick, I'm just going to show you a couple things here about why I'm doing what I'm doing, and then I'll break it down and show you the results. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and insert a square here, and I'm just putting it over here. I'm not really super concerned about this part of it yet. What I am concerned about is up here under the Enter Settings, because just like the trial version or the full version of the Glowforge stuff, uh, if you want to buy these materials, they are very, very expensive, um, like super expensive like i can get one of these for what i can get 24 of one off of amazon and they're essentially the same thing so i want to figure out what settings work for us here uh, so that i can use a non-certified material because the certified ones are just too much money uh, so here it gives me the option of going in and setting up manual stuff uh, where i can engrave cut score or ignore i'm going to go over to manual here and you'll see that there are two real settings really three that we have we can set the speed uh, from 0 to 100. That's how fast the laser head's actually going to move. The actual power that the laser head's putting out, uh, this is 0 0.01 power, and it goes all the way up to 10 power, which I assume is the full 6 watts. And then you have the number of passes that you want to do. Uh, so basically what I want to do is I want to design a little grid area where I can test out what it takes to cut through the material that I have, um, how I do that, and kind of what the optimal settings are for all that stuff. One of the other annoying things here is that you can't save any of these settings. Why, why that's a premium feature, I don't know. I'll make a whole other video on the silliness that is the premium features here. Uh, but let's go ahead over into the program that I'm gonna be using, uh, which is called Affinity Designer. And you can use Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator. Uh, basically, you're looking for a vector program. Real quick, this is me jumping in here. Uh, this is all well and good, but while I have my free trial of the premium, I'm just gonna use the tools I have because it's way faster, way easier. Uh, but you can see all the things I'm doing here, no worries. Of all the things that I drew inside of Affinity, I kept three things. I kept an S, a P, and then a square. And I'm just gonna try to engrave the S and the P so I kind of have a grid space. And then I'm gonna lightly cut the uh, square. So we'll see what that does. So after going through everything in Infinity Designer, I just decided that, hey, I could just use the premium features while I still have access to them uh, and draw a simple rectangle here. Uh, number of points is four, rounded corners, no. Uh, I'm not sure what the dotted lines means. We'll figure that out. Uh, I'm gonna shrink this baby down. Uh, we're gonna put that, let's say up there. And then what we can do is we can go to this square here and ignore it. So I'll go back and ignore. So it's not gonna print the square anymore or the big square, but we'll have this one here. Uh, and then I can go in uh, to its settings and I can say, hey, I wanna do manual. Uh, let's say that I want the speed to be Let's go with 10 and the power to be one. And then I have that. And then what I should be able to do if the world is a nice and kind place is I should be able to control C, control V and paste another one of these in. Uh, although it looks like it's gonna be different. It's gonna keep the same settings for both those. So I don't wanna do that. Uh, so I'm gonna set the, set the power back down to 10 and or speed down to 10, the power at two and we'll just see what happens there and if i draw another shape does it not that does it give me oh it does okay cool okay so we can go in here and lay out what i was trying to lay out before just in here okay and now we can enter our settings on this one so we'll go back in we want it to be a cut we're going to go to manual this time the speed is going to be 20 and our power is still going to be two and then we'll go back. And you can see that it's keeping those settings. Well, sort of keeping those settings. Let's go back here. I don't know why it decides to not uh, save them sometimes. Uh, so speed, we're gonna do 20. And the power is going to be two. Okay, so now we can see we have a speed of 10 with the power of two, a speed of 20 with the power of two. Uh, and what I really should do is change all of the passes to two. Um, I'm basing that on the simple fact that I know that it uses two passes when it's using the proof grade, proof grade material, excuse me. Uh, so I'm gonna go through and get these set up. I'm not gonna do all of them um, right quite now. Um, I will get them 
dialed in here in a little bit. Uh, but I do want to just kind of play with stuff and see how it's working. Um, and what I really should do is do like a diagonal, just kind of get stuff set up to begin with here. And let me just change the size of that. All right, so I'm going to print these three um, and we'll see what happens with them. All I have to do is hit print. It will go through and autofocus, do all the stuff with the material, la di da. And then uh, I'll just have to run over the machine and hit the button and we'll see how these ones come out. Again, this is supposed to be a cut. Uh, so it's not engraving. Uh, we saw what the P and the S look like as engravings, and they're not bad. They probably need to be a little bit deeper, but it's uh, pretty close already with those settings. Uh, whereas the cut here on this outside one uh, with the settings we had in there earlier are not going to fly. Uh, but what I should be able to do is just take these three cuts, move them down, and kind of play with them a little bit more. Uh, so we're verifying everything. And this is one of the things that I dislike about this machine is that I can't do this on machine or even in an app. I have to send it out to the internet to do all this, which is slightly annoying, but whatever. I decided to go with it. I knew the uh, limitations of it when it was ready to go. And uh, just a heads up here, this entire S, P, and the square were like a two minute print total. Uh, you can see this one's ready to go. So I can hit print and uh, we'll be ready to go and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so let's take a look at this real fast here. This was uh, this power of 10, or speed of 30 with a power of two, speed of 20 with a power of two, and this was speed of 10 with a power of two. You can definitely see there's more burning here than the, what there is in the later ones, and uh, it doesn't look like we cut through anything, although we got some lines here, so we're starting to. Um, there's little waves in here, so you gotta kind of adjust for that, and what I might do is just up the power a little bit and then uh, go back and play with the speed. Uh, but this gives us a good idea of where we're gonna be at for a lot of the stuff. And you can see this was three cuts on this and at uh, the fastest speed and the lowest power, and you just get a, that. But we're starting to get uh, some progress here, which I'm really excited about. Let's fill out the rest of the grid here. This is just some real quick filler video, but basically what I did was I copied those squares and then I moved them down and changed the numbers per each thing to see what it did. All right, we have round two and it looks like we have a wiggly guy there. So we actually did punch through there. This one's still not, this one's still not, uh, but our basic speed of slow and a little more power cuts through this, no problem. And you can see that our next one is actually getting close too. Uh, so we're doing, we're getting there. Uh, we just need to check a look at the scorching. You see, it's actually not as bad as what it looked like on this one. Maybe that's just because part of it fell over and this one's not, uh, but I'm pretty happy with where these are at. I just need to see if we increase the speed. Uh, obviously, we're not going to increase the speed here because it's not cutting through. It's not doing anything. But more if we move over to this area when we have more power and more speed, what does it look like there? Uh, so we'll continue going through and seeing what happens. And a big jump forward here. But if you take a look, uh, the left to right is speed. So that increases 10% each time. And then power goes up one each time. So we can kind of follow this grid and see exactly how it increased or what was able to cut. You can see we don't get a lot of cuts for a long time, but as we increase uh, the power, uh, eventually we're able to cut out pretty easily throughout time. And you can see if we hold it up to the light here, uh, there is cuts through the whole thing, but not the entire part of the square. So I took uh, some marker here and went through. Power started off at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then the speed was at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So you can see we got four cuts uh, with a speed of 40 and a power of 10, a speed of 30 with a power of 8, a speed of 20 with a power of 7, and then a speed of 10 with a power of 3. So those are the cuts that we have. Uh, again, if we hold that up to the light, you can kind of see uh, some different things about it. Uh, but if we take a look at the back, you can see it cut through a lot of these most of the way. Uh, and that could, again, be the waves as it goes through because plywood, even small pieces of plywood like this, when they're really thin, don't lay perfectly flat. Uh, but these are going to give us some settings of what we know to expect for this plywood. I've done this on a couple of sheets, so I know that this is expected from my Amazon plywood, where I got 24 sheets for $40, uh, which works out to under 50 cents a sheet. So I'm pretty excited about that because if I was buying from Glowforge, I'd be spending $20 to $40 for a single sheet of this stuff. Uh, I still have some experimentation to do with uh, putting masking tape over here and making sure there's no scorch marks or anything like that. But right now, I'm real, real happy. 
and you'll learn about this part here, way up there, uh, in just a second. And I just downloaded a premium design from Glowforge while I still have the time, and you can see that it worked perfectly. This is set with the basic settings, and it works. All right, I'm, I'm done. Uh, I'm going to be doing more Glowforge stuff here, so if you're into it, let me know. If you're not into it, also let me know. Uh, but I appreciate your time, and uh, this is the end of the video. If you're still watching this, I'm impressed. Thank you for the view time. I appreciate it greatly, and I'll see you on another video. Have a good one.